Happy new day, happy new way. <laughs> Welcome. This is well, my main one temple space. Welcome. <laughs> We've got electronic locks on the door, so you don't even need a key. It's wonderful, you know. So we have guests that flow in and flow out. And especially when we used to have visitors from all over the place, all over the world coming around. So, <clears throat> yeah, you're awesome. Most of them artists. And we've got some beautiful original artwork by Mitchelly. She's amazing. And here's another one of hers. And so this is of Hayes Bluff and her favorite food, sweet potatoes or yams that they dig up in the area. And then this is her totem, the spear bush. And so they'd lay them out and dry them out and then, you know, make spears once they're all dried and straightened out, that sort of thing. So, I was thinking about the way that we greet each other and that the way we use language and spelling. Thank you much, sister, for sharing that. And so, um, you know who you are. So, I'm just sharing some other things in the sense of, the other day I met a neighbour and he said, Good morning! And I went, hmm, what are you mourning? <laughs> but then in a sense I thought about it, well maybe it is a good morning. If you had any nightmares, ciao, see you later, you know? But then, if it was something like, well, how do we treat our spelling, our language, and what we say to each other? Happy new day. Uh, happy new way. G'day. Good day. God, goddess day. Right? So, there's so many elements in that. I mean, you could have another one and where if someone's greeting you and going, Hey, you don't look half bad, do you, today? And it's like, wait, what does that mean? Was that a double negative, double compliment? <laughs> so, this is the interesting thing about English or spellinglish, okay? And so, today, well, you know, as I head up to the loft and moving towards the northeastern extremity of the loft. Welcome, beautiful people. temple loft space in the furthest northeastern corner is the spiritual knowledge self-cultivation area and you can you know get a screenshot if you want that kind of thing but yeah I love to um, look at these kind of directions because it helps create some mind and thoughtfulness into your everyday practice of whatever you're doing. So right now sitting here in you know the knowledge self-cultivation spiritual kind of space and then looking out across to love over in the southwestern corner over in the northwestern, we have travel and helpful people. Literally, my luggage is there and photos of people I've met on my travels and things like that. Over here is children and creativity. And that's where we're going to have a lot of fun soon, you know, creating a lot of music, sharing a lot of this kind of deep knowledge, deep gnosis, you know, GNO. <laughs> and also, um, you know, with other folks, you know, of course, the fire element there with... Um, you know, that's to do with your fame and reputation over here, your, well, your life path, essentially. Over here is family. <laughs> and so you can see where I kind of set it up, where people can kind of chill and watch any performances going on. Over here, we have wealth and abundance. And I've set up a little tea party for the queen. I'm going to do a little kind of flare and flow and, uh, you know, just playing a bit. There's some deep gnosis in there. But, yeah, it's going to look like a bit of a tea party with maybe, you know, some nice tea and maybe... No, I don't think I have any cucumber sandwiches, really. 
So, what I really wanted to talk to you about is um, <clears throat> incorporating some of these elements in our daily practices or however you do it. Um, you know, I do it in my own way. I'm focusing on the ancient Eastern knowledge of feng shui and there's a lot of other um, deep tribal gnosis that also focuses on what we call in the west the cardinal directions or essentially north south east west and knowing where your orientation is in relation to everyone else and everything else you know it's like oh yeah i'm gonna go down head down to the shops well where are the shops oh yeah they're actually southwest so yeah i'm heading southwest to those shops over there in the southwest okay cool gotcha mate <laughs> you know so i'm coming at you from sydney the heart of sit well yeah Barramatta to be exact the heart of Sydney, that's what I meant to say. So Barramatta, the place of the eels, and that's west of, you know, the east coast, obviously. And smack bang between kind of like the east coast and then the Blue Mountains over that way, and then down south, uh, well, down south, <laughs> up north, you know. So um, it's a very central, centered location and great for a Libran air sign a wooden rabbit slash cat meow so um you know some really interesting energies here and i feel a deep connection with this place and this and with this space and so one of the things that i'd like to share with you while the 432 hertz tibetan gongs are playing in the background is that um yeah things are really about energy vibration and frequency there may be uh, what we call the one percent <laughs> or perhaps the zero point zero something percent <laughs> but what i like to focus on and flip that in a sense is you know not illuminati shit but flip it to divine balance masculine feminine energy you know like yin yang energy right and i believe that that place that eastern philosophies talk about they talk about um the the art of flow essentially the the Wu Wei, <laughs> the Wu Wei Wei. <laughs> so Wu Wei as in, or Wu Wei as in W U W E I. Okay, Wu Wei, Wu Wei, and it's that place of flow that you can sit in, where you know when when say for instance we examine the the Yin Yang symbol, right, and often. We're, we're obsessed with like, oh my gosh, you know, there's the black, there's the white, there's the black, and there's the white. But then we forget about this middle element here, where that is like the center of all the flow. And to me, it's like, you know, if you had a, a little rubber ducky kind of floating in the ocean, you know, you'd kind of just be in that little flow space, you know, as above, so below, but you're just kind of here rocking away and you're all right. So, um, you know, and, and, and I think about that center space often, and I think about, well, how can we sit in that center space of flow of not too much desire, not too much undesire, <laughs> but that happy medium, that place. And, you know, that middle place is a bit like a reflection. And, you know, what is that reflection? And is it a total mirror? Is it clear? Is it just a reflection of certain elements, like a, uh, or a bit like a, a dichroic filter that will, like, I'm not sure if you can see with these lenses, but they've got a special coating on it. And they're actually reflecting a lot of the blue light and, uh, or what we call blue haze. And sometimes you've seen me wear yellow glasses and that also helps compensate or cut out a lot of the blue haze, like a dichroic filter. And that can refine focus <laughs> and clarity. And so, you know, in that middle element of yin yang, um, yeah, perhaps we as divine healers, divine beings, divine shamans, um, whatever you want to call yourself, you are authentically you. But then we float in that middle place and we go like, okay, um, how can I be of benevolence, of benevolent service? How can I do that in a sense that honors who I am and my needs and also the needs of others? And how can I move through space and time seeking to cause the least amount 
harm, loss or damage, or essentially to move through space and time in peace and love, right? So uh, thinking along those kinds of elements, thinking along like all of the different directions that we can face and that we can place intentions with, you know, and bring that thoughtfulness into our minds because <laughs> I think our minds are kind of full as they are already with um, the pace of this world, the quickening, um, the interconnectivity of everything, but then also too at this time in particular during these COVID times, um, the sense of isolation as well. But then perhaps it's an opportunity to really, as I'm finding, to connect with a lot of elders and to learn from them and to learn some of their deep gnosis and then from there to be inspired to research and perhaps rediscover lost knowledge that once you kind of inflow, once it's revealed to you or comes to you, it just unlocks other keys to other hidden knowledge that's within you already and you test it out, you know, and you go, wow, how does this feel for me? And how does it feel for others? Does it feel authentic? Does it feel like it's coming from a place of love and peace um, and beauty? Why not? You know, so it's like, okay, cool. So here's a few things that are working out for me. Maybe it can help you. And this one in particular was a conversation to do with the days of the week. <laughs> So, um, 